And some of you may say, wow, that's crazy. I thought this service was all about Jesus' life and his resurrection and his power. And that's all good, but I wanted us to focus for just a moment on his death and recognize that it's the coolest thing in the world to die with Jesus. Remember, Paul said, I die daily. Remember that Jesus said that you need to take up your cross and follow me. Cross is all about death, not about life. The coolest thing about this is that, is that when we have the privilege of humbling ourselves, whatever that means, I want to demonstrate that in just a moment. And some of the kids know that I plan to give you a special present. It's not wrapped up, but in a few minutes, I'm going to do something for you that is my present to each one of you today. Thursday, Thursday night, Passover weekend, I suspect that if you went to the upper room that night, you would think, wow, they hired a pretty high-class servant. Because there was the teacher. And even if you'd never met him before, you knew there was something different about him. Kneeling down with a little towel around his waist, washing the feet, the dirty feet of his disciples. Now, today we have come with feet. Most of us anticipating that we might be washing feet, and not all of you need to do that, by the way. We, we offer an open communion to people of all faiths. So if you don't feel comfortable with washing feet, it's okay. But I want to make a case. I want to make it so compelling that you want to go to the gym, to the community area where we have everything set up. So you, in just a few moments, you could imagine what it would be like kneeling down like Jesus did and washing somebody's feet. Now, our feet are probably fairly clean, and if they're not, it's okay. We have water and towels. We have soap you can use to wash your hands afterwards. It's all good. But here's the deal. Jesus kneeling down, washing the feet, and kind of knowing whose feet he was washing and what they were about to do or not do, the feet that would run away when the soldiers came, the feet that would deny him. He washed those feet, and he didn't think a thing of it. And sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, I can wash that person's feet, but it might be kind of difficult over there because, you know, we've had this long-standing difference of view about theology or whatever. Today is the day to let Jesus say, you know what, all those differences are important. I respect you. I love you. You are precious to me. And the way you think is important to me. But what is most important today is to know that we will kneel down and we will wash one another's feet. Some of you will wash people's feet that you've never met before today. And some of you will wash people's feet who you live with. And last night there was an argument. And you're going to wash that person's feet and you're going to say, I'm sorry. Thursday Moundy, those of you who come from a Catholic tradition, you will remember this term, spelled M-A-U-N-D-Y. For the first 400 years after Christ, all Christians washed feet, by the way, just so you know. And then things changed a little bit. But there were some churches, Orthodox, Catholic, Roman Catholic, that continued to wash feet, but it was more of a symbol. And so what happened was that the rulers on Thursday, Passover Thursday, Thursday Moundy, would invite five or ten really poor people to their palace. And they would not only get down and wash those poor people's feet, but they would give them a cash gift so they could buy a new set of clothes and enough money for food for at least a month. That was the tradition. And that went on for several hundred years. About 1600, um, th that tradition stopped. 
but it carried on, by the way, the Spanish monarch until the early 1900s. So he was the last monarch to stop Thursday Moundy, this special moment when the whole country knew that the monarch, the king or queen, would get down on his or her knees and would wash the feet of beggars who were brought off the street as a symbol of what Jesus does for us, his disciples. Well, you might think, well, you guys are kind of weird. If there are some of you who have never been inside of Seventh-day Adventist Church before, I hope there are. I hope there continue to be more of you who will be brought, friends, family, uh, neighbors. So if this is your first time, listen, you can Google it. There are at least 16 other denominations that wash feet at different times. Some do it weekly, some do it quarterly, as we tend to do. Uh, I threatened to my wife, I said, wouldn't it be cool if we, if we did this every week for a while to kind of catch up if we have lost a few uh, opportunities, but I probably won't do that for a year or so. But here's the deal, folks. This is the most precious moment in the life of a church to be able to follow this simple thing that you children in a moment now, a few seconds from now, are going to understand very well. And here's what I want to say. We have from some friends from Myanmar, used to be called Burma. You're very precious to us. We're so glad. You came all the way from Oak Harbor. They skipped over our church in Oak Harbor and came to Mount Vernon today. Okay. And in Asia, if you're a teacher, you have been a teacher, haven't you? So when your students respect you, here's what they do. If he was my teacher and I respected him, this is what I would do after he had taught me. Right? I would touch his feet. See, and, and if you find an old teacher that you haven't seen for years in the marketplace, oh, oh my, oh, it's been 20 years. 15, 10, that's right. It's been 10 years since you taught me last. And, and so we would, in Asia, we would touch the feet of the people that we want to honor and respect. And so today, as we have music, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. This is the time. Guitar, flute, get it out, get it ready. I want to have the privilege of very quickly giving you the best present that I know of. I want to treat you as if you were my teachers as if you were Jesus, because you are Jesus. But for those of you that would love to let this love, this spirit of sacrifice, keep on going in a special, tangible way, even if it's your first time, all right, we'll help you. If somebody's there and you don't know what to do, just come on over to the gym, and there will be three places that have been set aside one for the gentlemen, one for the ladies, and one for the families. All right? So would you go there, and you're going to be blessed by the service of Sheila and others. You'll be seeing them there in the gym. And for those of you that are comfortable, please join me as we watch each other's feet. Thank you. And I know they have a heart for Jesus and a gift uh, to try to link the Holy Spirit's power with people who are wanting it and needing it. But they're not perfect. This is not a perfect cast up here, and neither are you. May I have an amen? Thank you. Uh, and I'm not a priest, okay? Um, yeah, amen. Except that I am only a priest in the sense that you are priests. And by the way, I'm not calling you priestesses either. Okay, we're talking priests here, all of us, together, according to 1 Peter 2, 9. And so we gather as living stones of the body of Christ to minister, minister, okay? Now, those of you that have traveled abroad, you know about ministries, right? They have nothing to do with religion. There's a ministry of health. There's a ministry of commerce. Most countries 
at various levels of the national and also the, uh, the local level have ministries. And all that means is it's service. So the next time you call me a minister of the gospel, remember, if there's one finger pointing at me, how many fingers are pointing at you, right? We are ministers. We are called to serve. And we're at our best when we serve. And there are some that would say, don't serve until you are fit. Jesus is fit. And if we wake up in the morning and we say, Jesus, I want you to cover me. By the way, Valentine's is coming. What are the colors that you see in the card rack? For good reason. The Bible talks about that we are crimson, meaning sinful. But Jesus makes our hearts all clean. And he gives us white clothing to wear, to cover that crimson. So every, every Valentine's card that you write and all of the Valentine's stuff that you see in the store, when you see the red hearts, you say, yeah, that's me. That's me. But you know that Jesus has made through this special offering that he has given, the offering of not only the foot washing, but also his life and his death. Now the Bible says that for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. This is 1 Corinthians 11.26. So if you, if you have your Bibles and you want to really read it out of the Bible, it's for as often as as ye eat this bread, okay, which we're going to eat in just a moment, and drink this cup, and we have plenty, so next time you bring your friends, for as often as we do this, we proclaim not the Lord's life, but the Lord's death. And I'd like to offer you good news about the Lord's death. See, in celebrating his death today, we say, okay, Lord, you died and you made it possible for me to die too. I can die early. See, I'm not going to... See, the death that Jesus died was the death of separation from God. We have the privilege of dying with Jesus, but we don't have to experience the death of separation. We just have the death to self. And God can give us day by day, foot by foot, toehold by toehold, the victory over ourselves because that's what we really need. And when our capitalistic selves are able to grasp it, we will be, of all people, most happy and most free. And so today, I'm inviting you to join with us. And first, I'm, I'm going to ask Stephanie if she would read the portion in Matthew, that uh, Matthew 26, that refers to the breaking of the bread. Now, we've all washed our hands, just so you know. Uh, I wash them doubly hard, okay, really scrubbed. And then we're hoping that the grace of God will take care of any other germs that I might have picked up along the way, okay? But here's the deal. Try as, me, as we might before Jesus. We cannot be completely clean. And we must depend on, upon his grace to, to do what, he, what we can do for ourselves. Stephanie, would you read for us? Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And I guess when I think of the bread that represents Christ's body, that Christ experienced everything that we 
do and have experienced. If we have felt suffering, he's experienced suffering. If we have felt brokenness and separation, he's felt brokenness and separation. If we have felt abandoned, Christ has felt abandoned. If we have felt betrayed, he's felt betrayed. So in all things that we experience and things we struggle with, Christ can totally relate to us and be there and truly minister to us. Let's just stand together, and I'm going to invite the, the folks in our church family who have a heavy responsibility, the board members, elders, deacons, and those of you who are doing ministry leading, who are leading our water of life and our discipleship, I want to invite you to come first because we'd like to serve you first. Would you just come up here to the table? And uh, music ministry, any of you who have been called by God to serve this church family, do come up. Please, yes, thank you. Um, sometimes we have official leaders, and then there are some leaders who are serving God, and they're unofficial, but God has anointed them. And so please, I just don't feel shy. It's not like it's a, a pride thing here, but we would like to serve you uh, first because you um, have big, big, big loads of responsibility. Thank you for coming. We just want you to know, yes, those of you that are leading Sabbath school, please come up first so that we can serve you. Those of you that have special hearts of ministry that you're doing that nobody knows about, that's okay. Uh, we don't need to know. But if you know that and we can just serve you as kind of the precious ones who we just count on. Without you, we just couldn't do it. Come, come closer. And he said, take, eat. This is my body. I want to share with you what Jesus' words are in Matthew 26. Then he took this cup and he gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. O oh God, with Jesus... We're giving you thanks. We're thanking you because you chose to be separated from your love, oh God, for us. And we're choosing, we're giving you permission to help us die each day with you to sin and selfishness. Now, Lord, we're not perfect, and we probably won't be perfect after in a few minutes from now. But Lord in heaven, we want to keep walking up Jacob's ladder. We believe that we do have that promise that you will help us take those steps one at a time. Not because we want to look around and tell the whole world, look at this perfect person but because we want to serve the world with love and we don't want it to be tainted by human uh, motivation and selfishness. And for that kind of pure love to flow out of us, we know that we need you living inside of us. So, oh Jesus, please make that happen now. This is a symbol. And as we drink this juice, which represents your blood, your death, we recognize and we thank you, oh Jesus, that you're willing to go on a huge fast. It's already been 2,000 years that you've been fasting for us until you will drink this with us together in heaven someday, soon, in your holy name. Amen. Drink from it, all of you.
If you feel comfortable, repeat after me a similar phrase. I choose to die daily. I proclaim the Lord's death for my sins till he comes. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and to give you perfect, precious peace now and forevermore. And together, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Now, if you would sing with me, the Bible says they sang a hymn. And I've chosen on a hill far away stood the old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and pain. Hymn number 159. Those of you that you can see on the screen, you don't even have to open your books, but if you love the feel of the hymnal in your hand, then do so. And stand with me. All right, let's sing this. Let's sing it because we believe it. And if you don't believe it yet, then just hum along and let somebody else's words speak to your heart. All right? That's okay. I love the phrase that I saw on a church in Puyallup. Belong before you believe. On a hymn. in heaven we have celebrated your death but by very definition your death also means life and as we leave this place we've knelt down we've said we're sorry we have served we've invited your spirit and we wish to leave this place with lights Take these lights to our workplaces, to our homes, to our neighborhoods. Help us to change our communities with your love. Help us not to turn away from someone in need this week. And if we can't personally help, let's find a way to help the person through other agencies, because so many good-hearted people live in this community. Oh, God in heaven, we ask forgiveness individually and corporately. And we invite you to roll down your love from heaven as we stand together at the foot of your cross. In Jesus' holy, precious, powerful, and healing name, I pray. Amen. Be at peace, family.